So what we need to remove is the half shaft or the axle shaft out of the rear of my Corvette. And I need to get it out and I need to replace the U-joints uh, uh, in it. So here's some evidence. Um, I have some pieces here. Uh, where's the one that got really destroyed? Isn't it sitting here somewhere? I must have already thrown it away. Well, I have some pictures of it. I'll show you what that looked like. Um, so I've already replaced the, the harder side for me. For whatever reason, the driver's side is just all beat to hell. But the passenger side seems okay. It's not nearly as bad, but I'm going to go ahead and replace that anyways. And now that I know a little bit more about what I'm doing, uh, I'll show you how to do it. It's actually a fairly, fairly simple process. It wasn't that hard to do at all. So there's two things that make this job difficult. Number one is you need to make sure you have the right kind of tool. And I have all kinds of tools. This is the first time in a while I've had to go to the store and buy something. Uh, you need to have a really long, long set of extensions, which I'm sure you have. You can always cobble together to get you know some long extensions going. That's not the hard part. The hard part is you have to have the right socket, the nuts that are um, on the, uh, the, the U-joints that we have to get off the straps. Those are actually teeny tiny, and you need to make sure you have this. It's so tiny, I have to read it with my glasses. It's 5 sixteenths. This is a 5 sixteenths socket. Now, the problem is, usually 5 sixteenths is going to be something, you know, teeny tiny like this, and you're going to have to use a, uh, a quarter inch drive for it. You know, a quarter inch drive is the teeny tiny one. Well, this thing's torqued down and it's, it's you know, probably rusted on there. Uh, this isn't going to be enough to get it off because you're going to need some good uh, amount of force to get that off of there. I went to an auto parts store, got this, and what I did is I got a 3 8 which is the size of the standard socket. You know, there's, there's three sizes of sockets. There's quarter inch, which is the baby one. There's 3 8 which is this one. And then there's half inch, that's even bigger. Uh, if you can find a half inch in this size, best luck to you. But you need 5 16ths, and I got it in 3 8 inch size, so the top is a lot smaller than the bottom. And I made sure I also got a 6 point socket, which means it'll be much harder to strip the bolt off because it's going to grab on the sides of all six corners instead of a 12 point socket. So if I were you, I would make sure I have a 5 16 6 point, 3 8 socket. I'll even write it in the description because it's complicated. The rest of it's actually pretty straightforward. Putting it back in, that was hard too. Uh, no, I haven't seen any videos actually showing someone put the, sheet, the CD shaft in with straps. It's a pain in the butt. The thing kept moving around and kept falling out, of, falling out of placement. and It was a little bit hard to get in and out. Let me show you how to do it. Okay, here we are. We're at the car. Got the wheel off. Um, usually the way I jack up this car is, uh, I don't, actually I don't jack it up that often. Uh, but when I do, usually what you do is you want to have these things uh, just basically on the pinch weld. Okay, so I'll get the car, I'll jack it up underneath this. So I'll get my little jack, I'll put it under there like that, jack it up, start lifting up the car this way, and it has to go up, 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 up. And I got my jacks down in the lowest possible setting it can go just to get it. So I have it here under the pinch weld like that. So pinch weld. Not touching this front pinch well, nothing here in between. And uh, that's how you jack these silly things up. You know, I think you're supposed to put it right here on this part of the pinch well, but I don't have the jack that grabs that part. So that does the same thing. What you need to do, the objective, is to get off the straps that are around the U-joint uh, holding it on. So there's four straps. Uh, there's two on each side. So here's the first two. So there's my 5 16 heads right there. They're just so teeny tiny. Okay, so when I start loosening it, the first thing that's gonna happen is the wheel's gonna wanna spin. If you have an automatic, you can put it in park and that should keep it from spinning. Um, but what I need to do is make sure that when I'm loosening that bolt, that it doesn't spin this whole thing. Cause right now I have this thing in neutral and I'll just sit here and if I turn it, hard it up. Yeah, see so it'll just sit here and spin. So a trick that I always use that never has failed me yet is to get an old beater screwdriver and inside of uh, you know these rotors you'll have these slots. So you get your old beater screwdriver, put it in something like that, 
And that way when it goes to spin, spin it will do that. <laughs> It'll do that and it'll stop. So let's let's do this. I have a swivel socket at the end of this. It's not uh doesn't have ED why it's drooping like that. It's just a swivel extension. Okay, so it's on there. And the length of these things really uh, oof. There we go. Okay. Broke free. Put it on that one. Get it off. There. Okay. One nut out. Uh huh. Look at that. Ooh, 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 it's just like fishing. Ooh, I got it. Come on, baby. Reel her in there. And there we go. There's the shackle and the nut. There will be some surface rust and some other stuff on here. And it might actually be stuck in there uh, too, especially uh, on my other side was, was really bad. So now I'm gonna rotate it around. And do the same thing right there. Okay, so here I am under the car. Now I need to get to the ones that are inside here. I'll show you what those look like. Come on in here. Zoom your head, swivel your head around, and bam! Right there, there's the inside ones. Not hard to really get to at all. Same thing, I got my screwdriver in here, and actually I need to move my screwdriver to the other side, to the top, because these ones are gonna spin the other way. So here I are, got my screwdriver in the slot, and I know, you know, you guys might think this is crazy, but I'm telling you, I've done this countless of times, dozens of different cards, getting things like axle nuts off, never had a problem with this method um, and I've put a good amount of torque on it maybe 150 170 pounds because that's usually what these axle nuts are at not sure how well you can see not sure how well I can get in here simultaneously there it goes it's not even all the way on there there it goes but it came off okay Okay, one more, and then this bad boy is out. Hey, none of my head stripped. And part of it, like I said, that socket is so big, it, it almost doesn't fit in here. Because the, uh, the shaft is kind of getting in the way. My glove's a little, little tore up. And there you go, it's out. So that's the bottom. I'm gonna do the same thing on the top. So, do do do. The nice thing, I'm gonna push this with my screwdriver. And I can use this for leverage Whee! to spin this around. Dang, there we go. All right. Got that out. Ooh, that one's a little rustier. Uh, this one also, this bolt wasn't uh, all the way tight. It was a tiny bit loose, which isn't good. Okay, so in order to get enough clearance to get the CV shaft out, um, the shop manual says to basically uh, tear this whole bottom end apart pretty much. Almost, I think they say to take the whole thing apart, like a good chunk of it. I've seen some other videos where someone's taking the leaf spring out and this brace down here out. And I've seen ones just where they've done the tie rod. So uh, I did the tie rod method on the other side, tried to get the half shaft out with the tie rod on, and apparently you can't. So I'm gonna take the tie rod off now. Get the tie rod off, there's a nut held in place by a cotter pin. There we go, and grab it, and then forward. Grab, grab, there you go, cotter pin out. Okay, so that nut is a 19 millimeter. This is what's called a castle nut. Because uh, the castle part, because it, it looks like a little castle. Isn't that adorable? And that's the cotter pin uh, is what kind of holds it in place. All right, so now, this is essentially a tie rod, so if you want, you can get a tie rod separator from the auto parts store to get this off, but I'm just gonna use a pickle fork, and it will probably screw up my boot. 
But I have a way to repair the boot in case it does, which it probably will. Come on, you. Heavy There we go. Yeah, that tore my boot. Yeah, tore the boot good right there, but like I said, I can repair it. I'll show you how to do that. Look at that. Look at all that room I have now. Wow. Okay, so yeah, you have to take that tie rod out. <laughs> That's all you have to do. So now it's just attached at the front a little bit. Oh, the other side came out. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, that's not what I was expecting to do at all. Okay, whoa. <laughs> that's still on there. <laughs> that cap is still there. There. Finally. Now you. Stubborn, stubborn, stubborn. How you do that. <laughs> All right, now I think it works best now to get it so it's up and down. There. So close. Oh, 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 finally. Oh, that's how little room you have. Oh, finally. Oh, finally got it out. Okay. See, easy peasy. <laughs> but yeah, there's no way to do that with the tie rod on there. Uh, and taking it off will give you just enough room to get it out and get it back in. Getting it back in's the the hard part. That was the easy part. So it's actually a uh, really, really, really good shape. These are nice and smooth. The ones that didn't fall off are nice and smooth. These are fine. But you know, this car has got, I don't know, 140,000 miles on it. So squeeze and out. Look how easy that is. Now I kept mine of these and cleaned them because I didn't realize they come with brand new of these. But I hung on to them just in case. These are my other other sides that are cleaned. Look at that. Super easy. Okay, now I need to get this out of here. So there's two methods you can do. So you get a socket, probably want to use an impact socket because they're a little bit tougher, but I haven't really had any issues. You get a socket, you whack it, and it will come through, and then eventually, you'll have to have a socket on this side that is big. What is this? This is 32. It's 32 millimeters, and it is bigger than the cap. So that's what you want. And then you put it down here on the bottom, you do something like that, go like that, and you go whack, 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 and it'll come out. But I have a, a press, and I'm gonna use my press. Jeez. I had enough room here. Maybe the banging it with a socket would have been faster. There it goes. All right. I'm going to drive it all the way down. So, yep, that's out. There we go. Now oh, I got it. Now I need to take that cap off. So that cap's off, and now I just can go wiggle and then it's out all right now that I got the, uh, the U joints out of this uh, half shaft I'm not gonna clean inside of here uh, on all these surfaces because uh, you saw how hard it was to get it out because there's a little bit of corrosion in here so this is the boring part but I really recommend that you do it you go through here and clean all these surfaces on the shaft 
and on the yokes that are on the car uh, where the mating surfaces are uh, to these bearing caps. So see how it doesn't exactly touch uh, all the cap. It just touches that white, this uh, grabs there and grabs here. And that's how that strap holds it in there. So you need to clean those two surfaces off too. So yeah, just sit here, when I use the scotch Bright, you can use whatever you want to get it off of here. Sandpaper, your tongue, I don't care. As long as you get all of this crud out of here, it'll make it much easier for installation. See those shiny surfaces? These are the shiny surfaces on the inside that you need to clean. So just, you know, no, 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 no. Scratch bright. Just look at that stuff fall off. So just do that uh, seven more times. So yeah, just clean these off. And that will really make your life easier on reassembly because you want these things to be snoop, super snug. Uh, so I got I got the uh, the inside of these yokes cleaned. Uh, I'm gonna start working on the straps next. But uh, uh, while I'm doing that, you know, I need to repair this boot and let it dry. Uh, so all I use on this is some uh, weather strip adhesive, just the good old regular stuff that you have to use on your car, anyways, because. Uh, um, basically got to do 100% restoration on this car. So I've gone through a couple tubes of this, <laughs> putting all the weather stripping in, and it actually works as a really good glue for your Zubu, because it's going to be soft and flexible. So I've bent it all back together. There's a bunch of grease in it. So, do 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 something like that. And just snot the heck out of it, and bam, it's fixed. And the other side was even more tore up than that. It, it tore on both sides of the pickle fork. This one just looks like it tore on the one. Let that dry, maybe put another coat on it, and that's it. That's the secret of boot repair. Can you buy extra boots? I don't know. All right, next I have all these straps to clean. So same thing, the inside of these surfaces, right here and right here need to be cleaned. Um, this little lip out here is always exposed and it's never uh it's never sealing on it so you're going to see a lot of rust up here um, on this part so you don't have to worry about getting that perfectly clean really what you need to clean is that little part right there and that little part right there and all i'm going to do is put it in my vise and wire wheel it so i'm doing this because this needs to sit flush i'm doing the top part because the bolt needs to go all the way through and then now the inside of the strap, where it's making contact with the bearing cap. Okay. There we go. Looks good, okay. Then you do that on all your straps. And I'm also going to do my bolts because the threads are pretty dirty. And I want to lock tight these back in here, so I want them nice and clean. So I'm going to also clean all my threads. But these are dirty, actually. There you go. So do that on all your nuts and all your straps. All right, so since I have the whole uh, half shaft out of the way, uh, this is a really good time also to check your differential fluid. Because uh, the cap for it or the uh, the plug for it's way here in the back, and I don't know how you would get to that easily with uh, <laughs> with having the uh, uh, yoke in the way or this uh, uh, CV shaft in the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that plug out right there. Um, everyone else seems to have a tag. Of course I don't because my car is just in atrocious shape. And that's why I'm doing all this work. So I'm just gonna see what the level is in there and then top it off. So that just comes off super simple with a uh, with the same socket you have. Uh, you just put your 3 8 inch drive in there. Uh, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna put some cardboard under here because it's possible it's small, but with all this oil all over the place, I would doubt it. Oh shit, it's full. Okay, that's full. Oh, cool. Good. Good thing I put that uh, <laughs> cardboard there. 
All right. Well, look what came in early in the mail today. Yay! What a pleasant surprise. So I've got my new uh, new bearings. Um, so I got the I got the Moog. Like I said, uh, these are theoretically the best you can get out there. Uh, I believe uh, they're made in Mexico. They're not made in China. Uh, these are the non-greasable ones. This is the only style that Moog makes. So this is really close to OEM. Um, and, uh, you know, the OEM ones, they were made in USA. So I'm going to hang on to one set of these because they look fine. I can re-grease those and hang on to them. So you take one of your caps off carefully, pull it off, make sure all of your... has a way more grease in this than the other one. And, uh, you know, make sure you don't have your needle bearings fall out. It doesn't look like it's going to fit. I'm going to have to take both of these caps off. This might be, this inner piece might be wider somehow. So the other ones that I had, the cheapy ones, I didn't have to take two caps off, but I guess I'm gonna have to on this. So I'm gonna pull off another cap. Ooh, I don't like doing this. And then, whoop, whoop. Okay. Okay. That that in and then put this cap on the top like that and and in cool so I get to get them down a little bit lower for uh, my clips now maybe I will just use the socket method this is going in super simple okay so I have the uh, the bearing cap actually lower. I actually have it lower than the groove because I need to put this retainer in first. So this is the OEM retainer. I cleaned it up. I'm going to reuse it. There we go. Okay, that one's in. Now, smack this side down a little. Clip in, there, okay. This is really close, it's almost all the way in there. <laughs> there, now it's in. Okay. That's how you do that. So you just repeat the process on the other side. That's how simple that is. You may or may not need to take off one cap or two caps, depending on your uh, universal joint, apparently. I guess that means these are so beefy, these new ones are so thick that uh, there's more material on it, I guess. Okay, there we go. Fully reassembled. Uh, the other one I had to put in the press because I was having to bang it a lot harder than I wanted to. So like I said, I have a press, so I'm gonna use it when I need to, and it just slipped right in there. So what happened to me last time that made it hard is my bearing caps, these outside ones started coming off and that was, that was no good. So I have my yoke here in the up and down position ish. And you, hopefully that's good enough. Okay, all right. All right. Look at that, so I can put this one in. That one's in. I don't think that helps me. Oh, it's so close, man. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, it went in way better. Okay, yay. Oh my gosh, that's in. Okay, they're both in. Okay, now, now the part that was hard. So like I said, I have both the yolks going straight up and down, just wiggled it around and now it's in there. You have like maybe an eighth of an inch of wiggle room. Um, you can also try to get a pry bar in here and push 
between like uh, the, the drive shaft and uh, this hub assembly. So to basically get a little bit more room and I did that on the other side. So now the hard part that I noticed was getting these caps on without, uh, without them popping them out of the yokes. There's a little slot that they have to go in to fit perfectly in there. Every time I swiveled it around to do the other side, the uh, U-joint would come out of the yoke a little bit and wouldn't fit anymore. So the bearing cap kept coming out of alignment. So I don't know. So before I put the Loctite on, I'm gonna tighten this down. <laughs> if I can get my big fat hand in here. So let's see. That goes on the outside. If I put this tie rod in, I bet if I put the tie rod in, that will put the pressure on it so they won't pop out. Maybe that's what I need to do. Huh. Okay, so keeping the caps like that, I'm gonna do, there we go. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, and I'm gonna put my bottom strap in now. So, reach it in here, got it tilted and I could feel it hitting the back one. And now I gotta get the front one to go forward um, and then stay in place. So now I'm gonna try to put the tie rod in and make sure that this part slides forward the way it's supposed to. I can feel it hitting the back one. So now if I scoot it forward, it should lock into place. So now here's the other hard part actually get this tie rod back in. <sighs> no one ever shows this. Look, this is the problem. So see how it's not touching? So I need to push it forward so I can actually see back there. I can see my U-joint and how it's lined up back there. And I'm gonna push this forward. So I literally have to push it with my foot <laughs> because it's really hard to push on this. Oh my gosh, I think that's in there, man. Oh, I think we got it, mofo. Oh, we got it. We've got it, we've got it, we've got it. Okay, now I'm gonna put those straps on, on the inside, and that should do it. Hopefully this won't pop out on me while I'm doing that and kill me, because I don't have enough room to tighten it down yet, but everything's perfect, so I'm gonna get those uh, straps on there. All right, so there's the um, U-joint inside the yoke. So that's where you want it to be. So it's inside of here where the, uh, it's definitely on here. What I was having a trouble with last time on the other side is this cap kept actually getting on top of this and I thought it was seated and it wasn't. So every time I did one side, the other side kept popping out. So this is a way better way to do it. It seems like I'm having way more success. So that one's definitely in. I'm rotating this bad boy around, gonna check the other side, and bam, it's in there as well. So you wanna do that on both sides, on your inboard and your outboard. Uh, the other thing that I've done is I also have my, uh, uh, the fake tie rod thing uh, seated. It's not tightened down yet because I still I put some more glue uh, on my boot because uh, it needs a couple coats. Um, and then let that dry and then tighten it down. But now the CV shaft, because this is in here, is also in there nice and snug. So get your half shaft lined up and then uh, put this in a little bit and that seemed to do the trick. That was way easier than it was on the other side. So this is actually a pretty simple method. So this job is essentially done. I just need to button it up. Um, so I gotta get some Loctite. I don't have any Loctite to do my screws. So I'm gonna pull them back out, Loctite them one at a time. Uh, the torque spec on this is 22 to 30 pounds, which isn't that much. It's just basically good and snug, not super uh, incredible Hulk tight. Don't do that, but just get them nice and snug. Uh, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna use blue Loctite on it. And it seems like everything will be put back together. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is, yeah, I, I'm using a hack on this that I wouldn't normally do because when I do do things, I usually try to do them right and not all hack like that. It's only a hack temporarily. I promise one day I'll come back and probably even replace this joint at some point. 
uh, with a new component if it needs. So there you go. That's how you do the axle shaft or the, the half shaft um, on this bad boy. Uh, I've been driving around for uh, over a month now and uh, it's perfect, it's great. Uh, I was making a whole bunch of noises every time I uh, went from reverse to drive, I'd hear clunk sounds and I always thought it was something like the transmission, uh, but it wasn't. It was uh, just all those universal joints that needed to replace. So there's four of them and uh, they make a heck of a racket. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, besides that, you guys, good luck. Happy C4ing. <laughs>